Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, landlord wanted to take $100 from us, but we found an interesting clause in the contract. The second story, my useless boss decided to take care of her personal life at work, so I helped her lose her job. The third story, Boss said to send him mail. Our team complied, and that's why his computer exploded. The fourth story. Manager doesn't want a lot of chicken? Well, then you'll get a bunch of complaints and regret it. Today's first story is, as per the lease we owe you late fees, let's check that lease again. So this happened in college to me and my friends. We moved into a house from some small rental company based in the area after signing a year-long lease. House is great. No problems, but we were told a week or so after moving in we would have to send our rent checks each month by the 5th by mail to their new office in the town 120 miles over. Whatever, barely a problem so we just go with it. So for the next 6 months or so we both mail our rent checks at the same time by the 1st of each month and never had any problems. Then one day my friend receives a call from the landlord saying we owe 100 plus dollars each in late fees because 2 months our rent checks came in the mail a day after they were due. They were definitely postmarked at least three days before that, but that's not the point. So he says, per the lease, you each owe $50 for each month it's late, and so that's $200 total. And we said, well, it was definitely postmarked multiple days in advance, and it's not our fault the USPS didn't deliver it on time, and that we had no way to know that it wasn't delivered on time. So how could we be accountable for these fees? He responded with, go read the document. Per the lease, your late fees are stated clearly. You have until next month to pay. Then he hung up. We pulled up our lease, and just as he asked us to do, we read it. He was right. Based on all we knew, we each owed them a hundred bucks. D. But in a section regarding payment, clearly stated, we were to hand deliver our rent checks to their office, which was still addressed to their old office in town, and the address we were supposed to deliver them to was not the one they had us sending our checks to. So we called them back. We looked at the lease and per the lease were not required to send checks to that office, but to this office. Insert old office address, so we'll be bringing our checks there from now on, and we'll not be paying any late fees because we technically never even agreed in the lease to mail our checks. The landlord flipped saying we were being children, that this was unfair, and he was going to get our parents on the phone. He literally said that, despite the fact that both our parents were obviously on our side, and we were 20-ish year old people. We just said, well if you want your rent money we'll bring it to the location described in our signed lease, since as per the lease you need it delivered there and we don't feel comfortable mailing them to unknown locations. Inevitably, he buckled. He knew he was at fault, and dropped the late fees and said we wouldn't owe any more late fees ever so long as the envelope was postmarked on the right day. Every month after that, we waited until the day before to mail them out, ensuring they wouldn't receive their money until at least a couple days after it was due. We stayed in the house the next year. Aside from this instance, they weren't too bad compared to some other college town landlords, and they changed the lease so it couldn't happen again. Felt good. The landlord should be more careful in creating the contract, huh? <laughs> because he fell for his trap, and in so doing didn't get any money from you. I always love it when some dumb A tells someone smart enough to read the contract they signed to back up something that could have been settled amicably. This almost always leads to malicious compliance. Well done on your part, OP. You could have continued your MC if you had sent checks to the old address as stated. In the contract, when they try to kick you out, Provide proof that you actually complied with the terms of the lease they so insistently insisted on. The second story is, Automated my useless boss out of her job. This happened a few years ago. I was a data and reporting analyst and did all the ad hoc reports for the company. My boss, we'll call her Carrie, was useless. She was one of those people that was always late, left early and took days off at short notice. The only thing of value she did was all the regular reports, sales, revenues, etc. We suspected she got away with it because she was having an affair with her boss. We'll call him Stuart. Our CEO was a fairly decent bloke. He'd look for ways to cut costs and would pay regular bonuses for the best cost-saving initiatives. Carrie was very keen to submit ideas and encouraged all of us to automate our tasks so she could try and take credit for the savings. On one of her Skive days, which coincidentally Stuart was sick, as well as the CEO was desperate for the sales report my boss does, I said I'd give it a look and see if I could get it done. Normally she'd spend two to three days doing it each week, but the CEO wanted it that afternoon. 
A quick inspection of the data showed it would quite easily be automated, so I knocked up the necessary script and got it over to the CEO, who was super impressed that not only had I got it done in a couple of hours, but also that it could be updated whenever he needed it. He asked if I could also look at the revenue, churn, and a couple of other reports. Over that afternoon, I automated everything my boss did. The only secret to identify repetitive tasks and automate them doesn't really matter what the tool is. Could be Selenium, VBA, Perl, Python. I've done plenty of automation tasks with all of them. Both Carrie and Stuart were back in the next day but were immediately summoned to the CEO's office before being suspended and sent home. Turns out the CEO knew they were having an affair, and all the times they were sick or late or had to leave early was so they could sneak off and have sex. He'd not done anything about it because how important these reports were. Now they were automated, he was able to get them suspended, and later fired for gross misconduct for all the time they'd taken off. I also got a nice bonus out of it. Yeah, exactly. She literally thought she could get away with anything because she was protected, and that she was invaluable to the business, because of the convoluted way she generated these reports. This story had a fair ending. She wasn't working and wanted to get on with her personal life, so she got fired. But I think you deserve more than just a bonus because you saved the company from failure. The bonus should be 50% of the total salary and benefits package of both terminated employees. Not just as a lump, but directly added to your salary for the entire time you work for the company. It's amazing that you got rid of a piece of crap boss and her buddy, but given the two positions were completely eliminated, you should see half the savings. Best of luck with that. The next story is, you want all of the output of every command mailed to you? Are you sure? Okay. A new project manager was assigned to our team, and this guy was an incredible piece of work. He was an older guy who had never worked with server-side computers before, but figured since we were all young he knew better. At some point we were discussing how we weren't alerted of something because the output of the program, a very verbose Java application, went to dev null, which is shorthand in the Unix world for take the output and dump it into a black hole, never to be seen again. A lot of superfluous information is sent to dev null. Well, the PM said he wanted everything to be saved, and moreover he wanted to be emailed these logs so he could go over them and point out what we missed. In the meeting we tried to explain that this was a bad idea, but this just made him certain that we were up to something, and he was going to catch us at it. So one of the guys changed how Dev Null worked. He made it an alias that mailed the PM instead. Everything. Junk output, logs, you name it. This was changed on just 10 systems. We had over 40 but it was sending the PM at least 10 to 12 emails a minute of about 4 to 5 kilobytes each. We had to set up a separate server just to queue the mail and parse it out to him. Within a few hours his mail quota was reached. He was filing them in another folder via a filter at first, but that didn't work for long. Now he couldn't even get his real mail. He called corporate IT first, who didn't know what was going on, but assumed he was downloading huge files. It took them over 3 days to figure out, hey, this guy is getting an SH ton of mail from the inside. So they contacted us and we pointed out that he requested this. So they upped his quota. It was maxed out within 20 minutes. So they upped it again, and again. Finally, the PM's machine crashed because his hard drive filled up. The mail was bouncing of course and when it did it logged that as well. Eventually the email server we were using to send him, and just him mail, crashed due to lack of space. Then we changed dev null back, because enough mail was queuing on that special server to send him one to two pieces of mail every second for up to a week. Well, the PM thought we did that deliberately, to hide what we were really doing, and he brought it up to our boss for reprimands. Our boss knew what Dev Null was used for. He smirked at us and said, don't do that again, you guys, and then explained to the PM that his job was to manage projects, not tell the programmers how to do their actual job. This led to a huge fight, where the PM went home early sulking. Later, that PM was transferring to our offshore team, and was later fired because he made a few more mistakes, but the main reason was in our MC. I can imagine his computer exploding with so many emails. That was hilarious. I love how many computer illiterate people get into management positions in IT. They either quickly learn to trust their employees to do their job, or they don't, and it leads to stories like the OP told us. It can be hard for some people to understand that they're meant to come in and out of this job if they don't know anything about programming. Their real job is to protect their employees from other people like themselves. Pure people management up and down. Hands off the ones and zeros. Haha, <laughs> I think this guy was the same way. He should have realized very quickly that what he was asking for was wrong. The last story is, I'm not allowed to cook food off my own judgment in a semi-busy fast food restaurant, KFC, and can only cook when you tell me to? Enjoy the coming storm of SH. So my previous job was a cook at a local KFC, 
which was one of the faster ones in the area. I had been there for three and a half years and didn't really have too many problems with management, and was actually friends with some of them. But then one of the senior staff got promoted to a shift runner, and that's when this already average job got worse. To put it into perspective, because I had been at the job for a couple of years doing the same thing daily, I knew my SH. I knew how much chicken we would need on a given night, and I could pretty much do my chicken runs by myself, and all the other managers let me do it because they were often too busy to watch and manage chicken. This newly promoted manager didn't like that I was bypassing her in the so-called chain of command, and not listening to projections which were inaccurate the majority of the time, and started getting annoyed. Sure, sometimes we had a bit of wastage, but everyone else agreed it was better to have a couple of pieces left over than to make a custom wait 30 minutes continuously. So this manager had a go at me, and our conversation went like this. Manager, prankish space four, you're not allowed to cook what you want. You have to wait till I tell you what to cook and cook exactly the amount I tell you to. Me, even when it is super busy, you want me to interrupt you packing orders and making burgers to get you to tell me what I already know needs cooking? Manager, Yes, I don't care how busy I'll tell you what to cook. You have to wait for me to tell you. This happened on a Tuesday night, the busiest night at KFC where I live, due to a promotion on chicken. Nine pieces for $10.95. So I didn't cook unless she told me to. And in a matter of 30 to 45 minutes, we were out of the original and spicy chicken, with drive through full and many customers waiting on chicken. The manager walks out back, and me and the other cook are laughing, cleaning things and sweeping the floor. No chicken was down. The fryers were on cool so it would take a bit to heat up and nothing was set up. The manager proceeded to yell at us asking why there was no chicken cooking and saying customers were waiting and they were completely out. I just turned to her and said, well you told me today I couldn't cook without permission and you haven't told us to cook for the past hour. The amount of complaints and peeved off customers having to go at staff members was insane. Sure I was behind for the remainder of my shift and we got a lot of flack from customers that night but she started letting us cook to judgment from then on. Plenty more stories of BS from KFC. Of illegal things happening. Super glad to be out of that SH hole. Edit. You guys seem to love this. Plenty of other SH stories from my time serving at KFC. Just some clarifying info of more info. Nine piece meal super popular could only cook 54 pieces per original clamshell and 36 pieces per spicy clamshell. Meant it usually goes quick as hell on Tuesdays. This was in Australia. Yes, we have burgers at KFC. Yes, projections were wrong a majority of the time, and yes, I have plenty more stories just like this, because I feel fast food breeds this type of story. I hope her superiors punished her for that, and that the pile of complaints that customers gave didn't get past your superiors. Why do managers always think they're smarter than their employees? You can be the coolest manager, but listening to your team is important. Sometimes they may know how to handle their responsibilities better than you do. Classic culinary nonsense. Did the chickens stay because they weren't sold? Why did you make so many chickens? By tonight there were no chickens left. Why didn't you make more chickens? I'm glad you came up with a plan to get back at your manager. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a good day.